Over the years, uh, we have had so many wonderful experiences. And uh, I want to tell you about one such experience because, you know, riches in life are not just measured in material possessions. Riches in life are not just measured in dollars. And I want to share one such story because it's, a, it's, it's such a powerful story. In 1983, uh, we decided to walk from America's Georgia to uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. That's only 700 miles. And so we decided to walk to uh, draw attention to what we were doing. The, the, the Ministry of Habitat Humanity was quite new in those days, and not very many people knew about it. So we had an advanced person with us who would go ahead of us. Uh, we typically would walk about 20 miles a day. We walked for 40 days to get to Indianapolis. But when we were coming out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, we sent our advanced person up to the next town, which was Dunlap, Tennessee, and said, find us a place to spend the night. And so he, he went to a First Baptist Church in Dunlap and went to see the pastor and said, I've got these people walking up the road here. Uh, they're with Habitat Humanity, and, and they need a place to spend the night. And the pastor said, I never heard of Habitat Humanity. Uh, I, I can't just open up the church and let a bunch of total strangers uh, spend a night in the basement of the church. I, I don't know what you might do in the basement of the church in the middle of the night. I, I, can't, I can't afford to do this. Sounds like a cult to me. And uh, he said, well, pastor, we really need a place to spend a night. He said, well, you can spend a night in my backyard. I can keep my eye on you that way. He said, but pastor, we need to take a shower. I mean, after you walk 20 miles in the middle of the summer, you're hot and tired and sweaty and need a shower. He said, well, you can shower in the backyard. Said, what? Take off your clothes and shower? Of course you're not going to take off your clothes. You can. I got a hose pipe out there. You can shower with your clothes on. Did you know you can take a bath with your clothes on? <laughs> it is unusual, but you can. And that was the best offer we had in Dunlap, Tennessee. And so we spent the night in the backyard of the pastor's house, and we had a hose pipe. And you put the hose pipe under, you put it in the deep you you got soap, you soap yourself up. And uh, we all took a bath that way with our clothes on. That's the first and last time I ever did that. But it's a, you ought to try it sometime. It's an interesting experience. But uh, since it was summertime, we dried off quickly. Spent the night in the passage. It was a Saturday night. So the next morning, uh, we said, Pastor, can we go to church and, and tell the people in the church about Habitat Humanity? He said, no, I can't do that. He said, I don't know what you might say. And, and anyway, we got our program plan. We, we didn't know you were going to show up here. I can't do that. But he said, well, can we just go to church anyway? Well, yeah, you can go to church and just come and sit down and listen, behave. But uh, we went to Sunday school, and we sat there and went through church. Church service went all the way through. And at the end of the service, we all stood up to sing the last song. Everybody had their song books open. And I don't know, maybe the Lord got to this pastor's conscience or something, but he looked over me and he says, Brother Fuller, you want to tell the people here about uh, Habitat for Humanity? Uh, I tell you what, I've changed my mind. You can come up here and have five minutes. But he says, I'm not going to have the people sit down because if they sit down, you might talk too long. So and nobody sit down, keep your song books open, and he has five minutes. <laughs> so all I had was a 30-minute speech. And, uh, so I went up and gave my 30-minute speech in five minutes. I talked as fast as I could, and I told him all about half and how we said, Charlie, no problem, no interest, and I just went, blah, blah, blah. And we walked out of Dunlap, Tennessee, and seven years went by. Seven years later, I got a telephone call one day, and it was from a man named Charles Henry. And he says, uh, Miller, he says, my name is Charles Henry. I live in Dunlap, Tennessee. He said, you don't know me, but I know you. He said, you're the fastest talking man I ever heard in my life. <laughs> And he says, you know, I've never been able to forget what you said that day in church, even though it's all these years later. He said, since you were here, I've retired. And he says, I went home and I was enjoying retirement. My wife and I were planting a little garden and we were doing a lot of sitting on the front porch and we were making trips and traveling and enjoying retirement. And a guy came by and offered me a job. He said, I didn't want a job, I was retired. And he says, this guy insisted I take, take this job. And so now I'm working again, and I'm making money that I don't want and don't need. Do you need any money? <laughs> I said, you called the right guy. <laughs> he says, tell me something about your work. And I told him. And he says, tell me. He says, I'm particularly interested in work that you're doing overseas. So I started naming off some of the countries we were working in. And finally, I named Guatemala. He says, Guatemala. 
He said, I like the sound of that country. He said, my wife and I have decided, we've been praying about it, and we've decided to give you all the money I'm making on my retirement job because we don't need it. And I just think God's put it on my heart to give it to you. And so as long as I work on this second job, I'm giving you all the money I make on this job. He said, you'll get a check in a few days. In a few days, I got a check for $6,000. Every year for about the next seven years, I, I got a check for all that he made on his retirement job. He gave us every penny of it. You Naturally, you, re, you really come to appreciate somebody like that. And it's just like an angel flitting in from heaven. Uh, and interestingly enough, this year, the 25,000th house will be built in Guatemala. So it's transformed so many communities there. But in 2005, when we started this new organization, uh, Charles Henry and his wife Wanda drove down from Dunlap, Tennessee to be there when we opened up this new ministry. I noticed that Charles didn't look too good, and I spoke to him about that, and he says, well, Miller, I've got cancer, and uh, I'm, I'm getting treatment, but uh, that, that, that's, that's why I don't look all that healthy. I, 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 I've been suffering with this. Well, since we started in 2005, he and his wife have given generous contributions, even though he's no longer working on his retirement job. But last week, I got a phone call from Charles Henry, and he said, Miller, um, tell me about some of the work you're doing overseas. And I said, well, we've got an 80-house uh, project in Nigeria. Uh, we're building 100 houses in El Salvador. And he says, how much do your houses cost in El Salvador? I said, about $5,000 a house. He said, what about Nigeria? And I said, they cost $3,000. He said, Miller, my cancer is not doing all that well. And I'm going into hospital tomorrow. And uh, I don't know how I'll come out. I don't know. I just don't know. But my wife and I prayed about it. And we want to give you a significant gift before I go into the hospital. So what we'll do is uh, send you $9,000 so you can build three more houses in Nigeria. I, I haven't heard from Charles since he made that phone call. I will call uh, his house when I get home next week to see how he's doing. I'll ask you, what is an experience like that worth? I wouldn't have had it if I hadn't gotten off the path I was on in life, if I hadn't gotten on to another path. A planned life can only be endured.